You are listening to ChartingWealth.com's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning June the 27th, 2016. What do we have going on? Well, the Brexit is all the news, and I must admit, I too am surprised. The British people have guts still, particularly in the northern part of England and Wales. They voted to leave the European Union, and of course, All the television stations, the news media are selling the hell out of commercials, trivializing everything, talking about things of which they know nothing, and making it sound like it is a huge, huge crisis. It may be, but what do we pay attention to here at Charting Wealth? We look at the charts. We don't listen to the media heads talking most of the time about things for which they have no education, learning, experience, or wisdom. What are we doing? We're looking here at the charts. First, we start with IYY. We look at our weekly chart. We had prior three up weeks ending on the 27th of May, the 3rd of June, and the 10th of June. And then we had two down weeks following that, the week ending the 17th of June, and then the most recent week that ended Friday the 24th of June. What do we see with the ending candle? It is a spinning top on our Hink and Ashi type candlesticks, getting close to a crossover going down, and it looks like, yes, we are going negative on our derivative oscillator. The market has been topping out again and again and again, trying to go down like it did at the beginning of the year big time, and then it recovered. What do we see going on here? Well, we may have the makings of a big down move prior to the election, thanks to the Brexit. What does that allow us to do who pay attention to the market and wait for things to happen? Well, if the charts allow us to, we may be able to get into down moves, that is making money when the market goes down in inverse funds. And again, when we say making money, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We're talking about you practicing, you learning how to read the stock charts. Once you get good at it, you make your own decisions. We are not telling you to go out and spend money. We're talking about virtual money. I'll always give that caveat. It's on everything we put out. We're an education firm. We are not a stock calling service. So we do have what looks to be close to a crossover going down with lots of indecision. What's the market going to do when it opens back up on Monday? Well, we'll continue to watch the reverberations and see what it tells us to do. Let's look at the daily chart knowing what we've seen on the weekly. What we saw happen on Friday is a huge down red candle, a gigantic one down 3.23% for the day. We were already in negative territory on the one-day chart. It had crossed over going down back on the 13th and had not recovered and moved up. It just went down again a lot further in one day. That is where we are. We The way the week played out, up on Monday, down on Tuesday, sideways again on Wednesday, up a little bit, up some on Thursday. Why? Oh, because everybody was telling us in the news media that the Brexit wasn't going to pass. Now, I'll admit, I didn't think it was going to pass either, but what were, were we saying here? You don't go through these events. You pull your money out, or you pull your trades out, and you wait for the market to settle out. Now, if indeed the market had seen what it hoped would happen, it may very well have gone up if the Brits had stayed in. But since they didn't, that is why you see this huge down move with all the uncertainty. And you're going to continue to see the fear mongering. There may be a recovery at some point, and then it may roll over and go down again. What will we wait for? We'll wait for our four-hour chart and our two-day charts to help give us a good setup. But that is where we are on the big chart. We have not yet, and the daily, we have not yet on the total market crossed over going down on the big weekly, but it sure appears that we're getting close to doing that. Now let's look at the S&P 500 down 3.60, so it's down even more. S&P 500, the 500, uh, 500 big companies with lots of volume, And again, two down candles over the last two weeks after three prior weeks of up movement. It did cross over at the end of the week going down. And 
at the same time the derivative oscillator, which is what we like to see, crossed over. So what are we looking for? Well, again, that's what the big chart's telling us, what we call our double long chart. So we are now in a confirmed down move on the big chart too. Big waves mean big money, typically mean long-term trends. Look at how long the market's been going up since it crossed over going up back on the 4th of March. It has been going up until now when it finally crossed over again. Had a little pullback starting in around the, 20, the week ending the 29th of April until about the 20th of May and then started moving back up again. But we now have a confirmed crossover with the MACD crossing at the same time. Typically means it's a strong confirmed move. Now again, the Brexit is a once in a lifetime kind of event, but it will have long-term ramifications. Now, and we thank the British people for their bravery, at least I do. All right, now let's look at what's going Oh, Let's look at the daily, what sort of happened throughout the course of the week. Uh, again, market was up on Monday the 20th, down a little bit on Tuesday, up Wednesday and Thursday, and then this huge down move. We've got a candle, red candlestick going down with lots of even further down movement on the wick on the bottom and up movement on the wick on the top. So that is what Friday was like, a bunch of seesawing. All right, now we're going to go back to the weekly chart. We're going to take a look at the Qs. It was down the most, 4.06%. The Qs was down. And the Qs, again, had a few weeks of some up movement, then three weeks of down movement. It, too, ended the week crossing over, going down, and the derivative oscillator followed in suit. And uh, if we look at what happened throughout the course of the week, looking at the daily chart, we see the Qs was sliding sideways most of the week, up a little on Thursday, and then a huge down move on Friday. No up wick, a little bit of a bottom wick, but big red down candle again, 4.06% down. So again, the Qs and the S&P 500 confirm down moves on your big chart. Mark that on your worksheet so you can keep in mind what the big wave's doing. And lastly, we're going to take a look at gold. Let's look at our daily chart, our weekly chart first on gold. We see on the weekly chart, gold has three confirmed weeks of up movement, crossed over on the MACD going up. Derivative oscillators not followed suit yet on gold, but three up weeks. The past week ended as an up week also. And if we look at what happened daily on gold, you can see that gold had been trending down, actually down every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then boomed up over for, let's see, oh, almost 5% on Friday. Just one big up candle, bit of a wick on top, a little more up movement that settled out with that big wick. How much did gold go up? Well, gold opened at 120 for the day. And its high was 126, and its low 12098. That's where it opened, and the last was 12616. So, lots of movement in gold. So, what we always try to do is talk about what affected the markets over the last week. After we've looked at our charts and where things are going this next week, well, I can tell you everything this next week is going to be dominated by what happened over the last week. The Brexit was a complete reversal of what all the media companies were telling you, what all the government spokesmen were telling you, what the Obama administration was pushing, what Cameron's administration in Britain was pushing. It is a repudiation of all of these globalist trends that we have been seeing. The UK leaving the European Union is like pulling out the stops. What does it mean? We don't know. But guess what we do know? We know that we have stock charts. We know that the stock charts tell us what's occurred in the past and can give us a very good idea as to what is going to happen in the future or at least what we need to guard against and not do. So it is imperative that you continue to pay attention Listen to us every day. Follow these charts. Wait for great opportunities to get into down moves, into inverse funds, both in the S&P, in the NASDAQ 100, and in gold. Again, 
Uh, now gold, of course, we, we would think would probably be moving up, so not an inverse fund, but GLD itself. But let's watch and wait and listen and learn and practice and get good at this. Because I tell you, when there's blood in the streets, there are opportunities in the market. And the only way you're going to have an opportunity is not listening to the talking heads and letting yourself get screwed and get greedy and get hammered. Okay, the way you're going to survive this and make this work is we are ready made for these charts. If you're getting excited about the opportunities that are coming up, that is wonderful. You need to increase your knowledge base. You need to go to our website, listen to our different trainings. We're going to be doing even more and more trainings. This has motivated us to help you more than ever understand what's going on, how to read a stock chart, and how to protect yourself, your wealth, and your family with the coming times that are going to be interesting. We live in an exciting time. Do not be fearful. Be brave. And the way you're going to be brave is by learning, is by investing your time and energy in knowing how to read these charts in amassing this knowledge base and this experience. You do not have to spend hours. You're going to burn yourself out. Spend minutes a day working on this. Listen to our trainings. Read, study, practice, do practice trades. Figure this out. Get good at it. And realize how these charts can save your ass. Please, we love to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Please tell us what else we can do for you. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Sign up for both of our uh, iTunes podcasts. Also follow us on, like I said, Facebook, but particularly YouTube. Go there. Be a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Uh, once we get to 1,000 subscribers, I know we have thousands listen every week, but once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we'll be able to do some proprietary broadcasts directly to you and for you. And also on iTunes, say something nice about us. Give us a five-star rating. You've already made us number seven in the world as far as stock market podcasts go. We want to go to number one, and we want to share this message and this knowledge with everyone we can, with the little guys out there and the little girls out there who are not the big players but who have the ability to make smart decisions and not get screwed just by listening to the talking heads. We appreciate you so much. Let us hear from you. Thanks so much. Don't be afraid. Be brave. Be knowledgeable. We're chartingwealth.com.